Hello. So while I'm home alone, because flatmates have gone to see friends, I thought I could do a little um, book haul. So we're going in order of purchase. Um, so I went home a bit ago, um, back up further north and to visit my parents. And while I was there, I bought two books. I'm, the reason why I'm not including the first one is because I've already included it on my Instagram and I've already like read it. So these are my like what I've bought to be read books. Only one of these is fiction, I think. Yeah. Only one of these is fiction. I just haven't really been in a fiction mood recently. Like I think the last fiction book I read was a book called um, Alice, which is on, I actually put up a review on my website, which I will link in the description if I remember. Um, um, I'll get onto the books. So the one that I bought with the Stephen Hawking book, so back up when I was in Cumbria, is this one. It's The, ho uh, the, the Hollow Crown by uh, Dan Jones. I bought his other book, The Plantagenets, I think is how you pronounce it. Um, I really enjoyed it. And I also, also his program was at the Great British Castles is like one of my big like comfort programs, which is incredibly nerdy and it's incredible. Like some people would call it sad, but here we are. So I've read his other books, so I know I like his writing style and it's still very much in my era of history, which is like medieval kings and queens and stuff. Love it. Um, so I will be enjoying that soon. Uh, the next one, which is very different, uh, is this one, which is why does E equal MC squared? Um, I got decent grades in GCSE for physics, but I didn't take it for A level because it was too mathsy. This literally has like one of the big m maths equations of physics on the front of it. So this one might be a bit difficult, but I also got it for a pound in Oxfam. So I was like, I've read Brian Cox's work before and I've understood it and he explains things well. And I do like some astrophysics. I just suck at the mathsy side of it. So I could never do it myself. So I have to live vicariously, vicariously through other people's publications, which is fine because, you know, I, I did drama at uni, so... Oh, no, this is actually a piece of fiction. This, I got this. We have a sort of like a second-hand book sh stall um, in Manchester. It's called, uh, the, I think it's just called Chapel Street Books or something like that. Um, and it's one of these like old fashioned -y looking ones. And it's called Windsor Cattle by W.H. Ainsworth. And it actually, it was interesting because it was the chapter titles, or like the part titles that got me. Because you've got Anne Boleyn, Helen the Hunter, who's like a Celtic slash folklore figure, History of the Castle, which was kind of the thing that sold me, um, Cardinal Wolsey, who I'm actually learning about in, at the moment in my little Tudor study series. I think I've just finished him actually. Um, and then another one called Mabel Lindwood, and I don't know if she's famous or a character in the book. But it sounds interesting and weird and very like, you know, history mixed with mythology, which just sounds right up my alley. So next, some of these do have um, a bit more of a theme. Because next we have uh, the Conquest of Gaul, Penguin Classics edition of the Caesar text. So it's basically, you know, all the stuff that um, Caesar and the Roman army and stuff talk about when they, like, I think it has, like, invading Britain and stuff like that. But it's at least, yeah, so... Um, paints a fascinating picture of his encounters with the inhabitants of Gaul and Britain. Or Gaul, I don't know how you pronounce it. Um, 
so it's obvious it's gonna be like obviously propaganda and it's obviously like you have to take everything he says with a pinch of salt but it's quite interesting because that's what all the books about the Celts I've read have said kind of like all we really have are the stuff by the Romans and sometimes by the Greeks who were a bit more sympathetic but I'd never actually read any of these sources so I was like I should probably do that to at least see what they're talking about and see what the original opinion was. I also have the Anglo-Saxon Age. Um, so this is a bit that I haven't really read much about and I don't think many people do because people just kind of like go, if, if they're interested in it, they kind of go like, ah, oh, Celtic people and Druids and stuff. And then they just kind of go, Vikings. <laughs> Like they had a ver I think they had a version of like Germanic Nordic beliefs. So that should be interesting to read about. Um, because yeah, we, we, we read a lot about the you know the Romans and the Celts and the Vikings, but we don't really touch on the Anglo Saxons. And I kinda want to because they lived here as well and they lived here for quite a while. So I thought it'd be a good read and very interesting and I do want more books on um, you know those Saxons so if anyone has got any recommendations that are like I want to say like under 15 pounds please send them my way um so the next book that I bought right okay I should say that I bought Caesar Anglo-Saxons and the next one all at the same time and I got these from Waterstones. Um, I got like the rest of them from Waterstones as well. But, and I got this, which is Grimoire's A History of Magic Books. And it's one of those things where it's always interested me and it's kind of like, I'm always intrigued as to like, you know, what our interpretations of magic and stuff were and like where the idea of the Grimoire comes from and all that kind of stuff. And it's really something that's beginning to interest me and I'm starting to take an interest in. Um, especially like obviously because I've been interested in more ancient history and prehistory and all this kind of stuff where magic and superstition and stuff like that was very normal in a way of life. Like, you know, some people believed that the druids were magicians and all this kind of stuff. And and then we obviously we had like the witches and all that kind of stuff. When I say witches because like probably quite a lot of the people that were convicted as witches practiced no kind of witchery or magic or anything themselves. They were just somebody, maybe like a loner that people didn't really like or they said the wrong thing about someone and this was a way of getting back at them and it was very tragic and quite often they burnt like the wrong people in terms of like who was a witch and who wasn't. But anyway, I'm getting off topic. That kind of like idea of magic and folklore and power and the differences of that through time and through area is very interesting. Okay, now we have books that I bought today. And these were kind of like, one of them I had kind of been intending to buy for a while. One of them I'd kind of had my eye on but didn't know if I would get or not. Um, another one was recommended to me ages ago. And then one of them was definitely a spontaneous purchase. But I, it also sounds like something I'd very like to read. So let's start with the one that I was originally going to buy when I bought the like, Grimoire book and stuff. But at the time I couldn't find. And that is uh, Simone de Beauvoir's The Second Sex, which is kind of like a gender cultural studies book. And um, I'd read bits of this in the library to be fair, I read this one just because I wanted to and I'd been intrigued by it and it's had such like a cultural effect. Um, yeah, so I'd read this in the library and I wanted to proper read, like, properly read it because obviously 
like this would take longer because it was in the reference section and obviously a book this big is going to take longer than the hours a library is open so i got it myself um and it should be very interesting because i studied sociology um in a level i got an a star little i had to reset stuff, stuff to get the a star but i still got you know it was, it was a good it was a good I succeeded in things in my past, um, but yeah, I am excited to read that because I am also a social media nerd and I haven't indulged in that part of me for a while. Um, so back on, back on the Celtic boat, um, we have this one, which is The Ancient Paths by Graham Robb. Um, it's not quite as clean cut as I think like the more like I am talking about the Celts and this is what we're going to do and we did this and this and this. It's more of a mix of everything and apparently he cycled on a bicycle to find this stuff out, so it should be interesting. Next one, which is the one I had an eye on, so that one was the spontaneous purchase <laughs> where I just kind of saw it and I, was, and I just kind of like started flicking through and I was like, oh god, I've read enough pages for me to not want to put this back. Um, the next one, which I'd been eyeing up for a bit, but had didn't know whether I was going to purchase it or not, and then today I was just like, you know what, I'm just going to do it, is this. It's a, I don't know if you can see that, A Treasury of British Folklore by Dee Dee Cheney. Cheney? I'm not sure. But it's a National Trust book, and I'm down for some folklore and some beliefs and some, you know, like superstitions and mythology and all of that good stuff. Um, and the last one, which was recommended to me um, by, to us, actually, because there was a bunch of us on the course, because uh, it was a sort of like an introduction to work kind of course, but they suggested this book which is The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen R. Covey. Um, as a way to kind of like, as diff like different habits that can help you sort of like be productive and, you know, set goals that you'll actually keep and how to like actually, you know, be someone that sort of people can depend on and not just, you know, look like you, you are and it's you know the whole of like fix yourself first don't do sort of like superficial things that just sort of like as as he says in the book shoves a band-aid over the problem i've as you can see i've kind of started reading it um because i've been having a lot of like problems myself in terms of um i think my problem was i had no made motivation to do anything because I was like, oh, well, you know, the whole like stationary or, you know, kind of like building up your self-confidence or doing this, that or the other were just kind of like patching up stuff that I hadn't actually fixed. And it's the reason why once one thing kind of crumbled, I just kind of went back to just, you know, like, scrolling on YouTube and not really doing anything um, and so I was like okay I need to do something core to make like motivation a part of my personality and to make wanting to do something and converting it to actually being able to do it full time and not like I don't know if I get scared or what but I just struggle <laughs> so I am hoping that this book will at least help me and there's like some other books that are more of like a uh, creative because I'm a very creative person and the reason why I was scared of getting this for a while was because it seems very business person orientated and like business and marketing stuff just kind of gives me the heebie-jeebies as someone who worked in that industry for a year i just felt so like almost like spiritually uncomfortable like i was like this feels wrong and it feels so inhuman and uncreate like it felt creative for all the wrong reasons like creativity is supposed to be 
fun and self-expressive and helpful and uplifting and or just you know like emotional and regal and all this kind of stuff but the marketing like because we had to go on like a marketing course for my apprenticeship and they were basically just like okay so here's how to convince people that they need things here's how to tug at heartstrings with stories so that you can sell things here's how to just worm your way into their brain by just projecting it everywhere so that they subconsciously end up buying the thing and I was just so uncomfortable the entire time I was there so I didn't get it like because I'd seen it around and I didn't get it for ages because it, it it looks very businessy doesn't it? it and like they say like oh has helped generations of presidents and CEOs have kept it by the bedside and I was like I don't I don't I'm not one of those but then it does continue um Students have underlined and studied passages from it, teachers and parents have drawn from it, and individuals of all ages and occupations have used it. So, it's a lot more open than I was giving it credit for, but it, it, it does look like a how to manage your company and make lots of workers like you kind of vibe, but that's not what it is at all. So, so yeah, they are the books that I have gotten recently. Um, I don't have, like, a large income, so I should not be buying this many books. And I'm definitely gonna have to put a ban on myself and just, you know, like, if I want more, because my birthday's coming up, so I might just be like, you know what, people? Just give me money and book vouchers um, so I can feed my addiction without being poor. <laughs> or at least poorer. I also, as you can probably tell, cut my hair again. Uh, I gave myself more of like a full fringe because I had one when I was younger and I think it really complements my face. At the moment, it just looks like a bowl because I'm like trying to grow these bits out. But you know, we'll, we'll get past the awkward 90s teenager phase and we'll hopefully bloom into like an actually decent looking flower. Hopefully not one of these though, because these look like they're you know, just tripping. Um, but that is the video for today. Uh, I thank you for watching. Um, but yeah, um, let me know if you've read any of these, if you think any of them are any good. Um, if any of them interest you, like, uh, I'll definitely list them down in the description and I'll, if any of them are particularly profound, I will probably end up writing a review of them. Um, I've written a review of The Celt by Alice Roberts that I read a bit back. I just need to polish that and publish it. So that'll probably be up on my website uh, at some point if you want to read that. I also have other older book reviews on there um, if you want to read those. I also have art on my website um, and also on my Instagram if you want to follow me there. I'm all over the internet, guys. I've just been in hiding. I haven't, I just suck at promoting myself. Because all of the promotion requires money. That thing I don't have any of. I say as I look at my stack of books. All right, that's enough self-shame. I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.